Hey everyone, it's Crypto Profit back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about how the crypto market has now lost $2 trillion in value. There's five shocking facts we're actually going to be talking about, kind of just recently hit by Yahoo. They put an article out, and it's actually got some pretty interesting things to talk about, so we're going to kind of cover those. But the big thing to note, in the last 24 hours, we've seen about a 4% decrease. Bitcoin down to 22 k Ethereum down to $1,200. BNB down to $220. A lot of coins really seeing a very, very drastic decline in the last month. Let's take a look at the last month because this is where we're going to see Bitcoin 23% of a decrease, Ethereum 38% of a decrease, Binance, uh, BNB down to 19 to 20%, XRP 21%. We're seeing great, great coins with huge utility continuing to see massive declines. If we take a look at the Dow Jones, we're going to also see, though, in the last six months has been a 14.3% decrease, losing about $5 million in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So we're seeing this not just across crypto, we're seeing this across other spots as well, like the stock market. However, do remember, guys, crypto is usually more volatile than the rest of the market, so we're hurting even more when it comes to the crypto market. When we take a look, though, at the crypto market, now losing $2 trillion in value. Here are five shocking facts from Crypto's Black Monday. This is going to be a great article that kind of walks us into five facts we kind of need to know and understand before jumping back into the market. And Right now, by the way, there is no end in sight on this dip. I think we could potentially see below 20K Bitcoin at the very, very least. And I will say, realistically, if the macroeconomics continues to decline, it could even be worse than that. So definitely continue to dollar cost average because you do want to continue to dollar cost average and at these low price points, as I do believe long term, Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as so many other altcoins across the space are going to do very, very well. So if you take a look at Bitcoin right now at 22K, Ethereum at 1200, these prices are easily going to double, triple, quadruple in the next three to four years. There's no doubt about that uh, for a lot of people. But do remember, guys, before we get too far into today's video, do remember, I am not a financial advisor, so always do your own research before getting involved or investing into the crypto spaces. Like I said, it's a very, very volatile market, and you want to be very safe and kind of understand the market before jumping into it. So let's jump into the crypto market and how it has now lost $2 trillion in value in the five facts from the Crypto Black Monday, they call it. So number one, we have Bitcoin is now at its lowest level since 2020. The world's leading digital asset, Bitcoin, fell over 13% on Monday to below $23,000, the lowest it's been since 2020. Despite a monumental rise in 2020 and 2021, after this year's route, Bitcoin is just 20% above its highs from the previous crypto market peak in December 2017. Number two, Elon Musk and Michael Saylor are nearly $1.5 billion underwater on their Bitcoin bets. This is not a lot of money to probably Elon Musk. However, Michael Saylor has been a big proponent of Bitcoin. He's probably going to be hearing quite a bit of people, the naysayers of Bitcoin, coming after him now saying, you know, how do you like Bitcoin now, etc. So we're going to be able to actually jump onto Twitter real quick. And if we go to Michael Saylor, um, let me see if we can find him here on Twitter, Michael Saylor. He actually tweeted out just recently because we saw a lot of people talking about how he could potentially be dumping on Bitcoin. We see that he continues to stack, st or he says, at least, you know, this is Twitter, he can do whatever he wants. He says, stack sats and stay humble. And then he says, when MicroStrategy adopted Bitcoin strategy, it anticipated volatility, structured its balance sheet so that it could continue to hold through adversity. This is after a lot of people claimed that uh, you know this wasn't the case. They they were looking to dump. They switched wallets with a lot of money. I'm gonna see if I can find. I'm sure somebody replied with the tweet. Um, not looking like I'm gonna find the tweet that easy. But there was a tweet talking about how he actually moved quite a bit of money from. Uh, one wallet to another, and it looks like he might be dumping. So nothing on that quite yet. Doesn't look like he's really kind of mentioning that on Twitter at the very least, as he's continued to talk about how you should be holding basically, and how they're kind of ready for this adversity. So let's jump back to the crypto market on Yahoo Finance and take a look at fact number three. Fact number three is that stable coins are showing signs of destabilization. So the one thing I don't kind of agree with here is stable coins showing signs of destabilization. Obviously, it happened with UST. UST had a very, very, uh, you know, in my opinion, bad structure of a stable coin in general. So it was a really bad example of what a stable coin should be like. So founder Justin Sun also said he would deploy $2 billion to stabilize the so-called stable coin in a worst case scenario and argue that the 15% downturn in his cryptocurrency Tron on Monday was a result of a concert uh, or really, you know, concentrated effort by short sellers. So this was the USDD token 
that briefly lost its one-to-one peg to the U.S. dollar on Monday. So, you know, we saw it with UST. We saw it a little bit with Tron's USDD. It is making people a little scared to hold stable coins right now, which is definitely not good because it makes getting back into the market that one step farther away than we, you know, were last, you know, last month or the month before. So I do want to jump over to talk a little bit about number four. Some Bitcoin mining machines are shutting down as prices drop. So the drop in Bitcoin has been so dramatic that companies using older computers to mine the cryptocurrency shut them down on Monday as they weren't able to continue mining and really kind of operate in a profitable income or a profitable outcome of, you know, running these Bitcoin machines. So it's crazy to see as these Bitcoin miners are actually shutting them down. So number five, the crypto fear and greed index is stuck at an extreme fear reading. Cryptocurrencies fear and greed index, which really kind of measures the sentiment in the crypto market, also remains stuck at extreme fear levels. We've seen these in the past and they typically showcase when they are seeing a almost bottom in the market. Hopefully that's the case now as we don't want much more pain before we see some gain in the crypto market or we may lose even more retail investors in this meantime. But I do want to jump into a tweet that kind of showcases that. So fear and greed in the crypto market fell to eight, extremely high fear, usually a sign of bottoming out. Uh, but that's not always the case. We've seen extreme fear for quite some time and we haven't bottomed yet. So we don't know exactly when we will bottom. And if the macroeconomics, like I said, continue to struggle, like we saw here with the Dow Jones, if the stock market continues to struggle, the crypto market's going to continue to struggle. If the crypto market continues to struggle, people are going to be less likely to get involved with the crypto market as people usually don't buy low. They actually usually buy high, it seems like. That's typically the retail investor. So realistically, we're going to have to kind of hope for investments from big long-term partnerships that want to get into crypto, or we want to hope for some big companies that want to start you know, operating with it on their balance sheet. We need some kind of big game changer here to really kind of flip this, in my opinion, or it's going to be a very, very slow but steady halt. We don't know exactly, obviously, what number that's going to be for Bitcoin and Ethereum, but... It's not looking good. I do think we are going to go a little bit lower. I think realistically, long term, though, it's a good time to dollar cost average in on these coins. Do keep in mind, it's crypto markets, very volatile. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, but thank you guys again for stopping by. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and hopefully you guys actually learned something today. So thanks again. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on. And then you can also follow me on Twitter, CryptoProfitYT on Twitter. I'll see you guys all in the next one.